whether it's checking in with a therapist like once a week or taking an art class or doing fitness, make sure that you are practicing mental health as much as you're practicing physical health. Yeah. Right? I it totally will tie in that. together and it will make sure that you have a very successful career. Hello and welcome back to the High Performance Nursing Podcast. I'm so excited. We have an amazing international guest here today. It's been a while since we've done one of these episodes. And Vicky, it's been a while since we connected. So um, let's dive in and say hi to Victoria Boateng. I probably yeah, said that. Well done. <laughs> that's well right, done. I guess. Yeah, you did it. You did it. Yes, <laughs> you guys know that listen that I'm butchered from this day. It's so bad. Welcome, Vicky, to the podcast. So excited to have you here. Thank you much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, let's do this. So before we dive into all of the awesomeness that we're going to explore, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Vicky. You don't mind me calling you Vicky, do you? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That? Amazing. Vicky, I just Vic, assumed whatever. that. For all the grads that are listening, you should always check with your patients <laughs> if they like to have their name short. Very Vicky. important. Very, Very important. important. Yeah. Okay. Vicky is a certified executive coach and a critical care RN from Toronto who has worked in healthcare for the last 12 years. Vicky got into coaching when her own coach helped her in I find the courage to speak up and stand behind uh, what Vicky believed in. Vicky's practice is to help women find their voice and encourage them to use it at its highest potential in their respected industries. Love that so much. Okay, Vicky, <laughs> let's dive in. Yes, and I would love you to tell us how you've got to where you are in your career. Give us the snapshot from graduating and what made you become a nurse and tell us about your career up until this point so far. Ooh, okay. I know. Easy first question. We're going right in. We're going right in. Story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so why I became a nurse? I'll be very honest. I think what led me to nursing was I am the eldest daughter out of four kids. Um, from an immigrant family from West Africa West Africa, Ghana. And like, I was just really good at like caring for people all the time and taking care of people. And then through high school. I really love science. And I'm like, I wonder if I can combine these two. I knew for sure I did not want to go to med school because I'm like, that takes a long time and I want to live my life. (laughs) So got into nursing um, and, you know, to all the new grads, congratulations. I know nursing is one of the hardest programs out there. I don't care what anybody says. It will like grind you down and spit you out and like rebuild you. It's a lot of depth rebirth situation going mm. on but congratulations to everyone who's here you finally mm. did it and gold star for you guys i started in neuro and trauma when i first started in nursing um and then within about a year or so i was getting a little tired i wasn't feeling like i was mentally stimulated so someone suggested that i should go to critical care and it's a tra- i work at a trauma center so the critical care is a trauma icu and Uh, Yeah, I did the course there. And ever since within ICU, I've done team leading. I've done like the rapid response team. I have been a preceptor. I have taught at the college level. I've done a whole bunch of different things. I'm very grateful for my nursing career because, you know, nursing is a very niche community. We spend more time with each other than our own families. (laughs) So you become very close. Um, Sometimes it feels like we're going because you see some really crazy shit excuse mm. my language no you can <laughs> and swear only nurses understand, yeah, right only nurses understand the craziest yeah. things that we see see and do i've been through the ringer with nursing um and i'll be very honest what led me to coaching particularly was probably a year before the pandemic started and i recognized i was dealing with a lot of burnout in critical care It's not always the most positive stories that you Mm. encounter. I was such a huge, and I still am a huge like advocate to like my new grads being like, figure out your mental health practice while you are starting out early Mm. because it's hard to break those bad habits if you don't have a good foundation. And if you want to have a long nursing career, you need to figure out what you do to decompress, how you actually express your feelings, how to leave work at work. And that's, it's not easy because we're dealing with people's emotions. We are a part of people's traumatic stories. Like 
coming to the hospital is not always a fun experience unless you work in L and D. <laughs> and even then, like there, it, things can go wrong there too as well, right? So, um, I ended up working with a coach. Um, and working with this coach, she opened my eyes to so many different things because mm. everyone who's listening, if you don't realize, you do end up coaching your your colleagues, you end up coaching your patients, like part of that teaching and educating and like getting to know the person and meeting them where they're at and helping mm. them get to where they want to be. That is coaching. Right. Yeah. Right? Every nurse is a coach. <laughs> literally. We're literally coaches. Like if you think about like getting your patient up from bed after surgery for the first time, you are coaching them through it. Right. right. Yeah. And you're yeah. also like cheering them on and like showing them how to pivot and reframing their mindset. Like, that is all coaching. Mm. And so my coach showed me that I was doing that. And I had, it just, you know, one of those like light bulb moments. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I had no idea. So, so thankful to her. Shout out to Alex. She gave me the encouragement and the permission to look at something different other than mm. nursing. And like I said, I love nursing. Nursing is always in my heart. But I just felt like after at that time, like 10 years into this, I'm like, do I want to do this for another 20 years? <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, it's very hard on the body. It's very hard on the emotional capacity. And I really wanted to explore something else. And I was like looking at my other friends who work in business and they were able to transition into different industries. And I'm like, why can't we do that for nursing? Why do we have to be stuck in one thing? You know, like we're multifaceted people, especially nurses. Like we are jack of all trades. Like we know how to shift gears and conversations and go from something stable to unstable and then go right back. Right. So coaching came up to me and I decided, okay, I'm going to be serious about this and actually like go to school and like get my certificate in, in coaching. And so I found Royal Roads in Victoria, BC. I did it online. Um, and again, like I was so surprised that there weren't many healthcare people in coaching. Mm. Um, it was very like engineering and accounting and sales. And I'm like, this is our bread and butter. Like we literally <laughs> coach people into like being into a healthier lifestyle all the yeah. time. Like in my mind, I thought it was an easy transition, mm. like mentally. And I was so confused why there weren't more healthcare providers. I think it was me and like two other people, but they were both like directors of care. And so they were doing this course. So they had a better um, grip on how to like, get their staff to take on more work and things like that. And I'm like, why is this only at a leadership level? Mm. Why can't coaching be given and be accessible to everybody, no matter what level, whether you're a novice nurse, intermediate or seasoned. From there, um, my love for coaching just like blossomed because, and I'm sure you get this feeling, Liam, like when you get to help somebody and like somebody who's always thought like, I can't do this. And then finally, like, they just shift a little bit. They realize, mm. like, there's another door and, like, you don't have to do it the same way everybody else does it. Like, that, like, aha moment is the best feeling for a coach. Like, 100%. we're not supposed to chase after the results, but I love that feeling. <laughs> when somebody gives themselves that permission to do what they want, chef's kiss. Yeah. Um, so it's been a great experience. It's, again, I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all. It's been hard <laughs> because there's no blueprint, right? Mm -hmm. It's not an easy transition as working in business and going into coaching or being being an executive and then you becoming a con consultant. Like um, Liam and I have talked about this before where the outside world doesn't really necessarily know what nurses do. <laughs> yeah. So when you're trying to sell your skill set, people are like, what? Like, how is that transferable? I'm like, oh, my God. Yes, it is. Like, mm. I can be in a very, like, stable situation. And then somebody is having an arrest. And I know how to adapt and work yeah. in a very high stress situation and still lead and delegate direct and still be respectful. Like, mm. those things 
can be transferable. So working in the entrepreneurial world and having to sell yourself, not as easy as you think it is because <laughs> nurses were very, we're very humble about our skill set. There's nobody saying like, oh my God, like, you know how to do this and you're great at delegating, you're great at leading. That doesn't happen in nursing, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. having a nursing foundation and then stepping into the entrepreneurial world where you literally have to sell yourself all the time was a hard transition yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I feel shy. Like, I don't, what? I'm supposed to like, <laughs> I'm like, you just do it. Like, don't you just do it? <laughs> It's such no, it's a different not like that. game. Yeah, it's such a different game. It's such game. a different game. Yeah. It's and I think that game. what I love that you touched on there, which we have a lot of synergy with, is our story, right? And I love connecting with nurses. So I'm always surprised by the amount of people globally that have a very similar trajectory in their career, right? In the sense mm -hmm. that you have... Um, gone through building your career, you've explored and tried lots of different things, you've upskilled, you've up-leveled, and then we all seem to hit this point where we're just like, we have so many questions and not so many answers. And I love there that you, one, sought out expert help and allowed yourself to pivot. And what you're talking about there for people listening in the coaching world is that idea, and I joke with our clients all the time, it's like there are 60,000 thoughts that you have a day like maybe right now you're just focusing on one of them, but there's 59,999 options available to you. And if I can just show you yeah. one of them, like that's, I think what you're talking about, right? Is like that just awareness of like, holy crap, like I believe this was true, yeah. but maybe this also could be true. And it kind of breaks Absolutely. your brain a little bit, right? So I love that that's what we get to offer. And I also love that we share this belief that every nurse is a coach. That is like, Absolutely. every nurse is a coach, but we don't know that we're coaches. And we haven't yeah. trained to be coaches. That is something that mm -hmm. I am so passionate about moving forward is helping nurses see that they are coaches. And I'm sure you are as well. And see that or equip them with the skills to hold space and to see mm -hmm. the opportunity in like every micro moment of the day to coach people. Because when we're coaches, I think that Coaching helps you understand that interactions is less about you and your experience in the interaction. And it's all about holding space for the other person, right? And that's tricky to do in the moment whilst the world's falling down around you and a cardiac arrest. But day to day, you can hold space for a patient and help them see that yesterday they did get up out of the chair. And you can be that yeah. like, advocate, hold some space and like normalize that it's scary, and normalize that yeah. of course you're going to feel anxious because this is new you've just had your hip done right and this is the first yeah. time you're standing up and I think that we don't recognize that we do all of those things and that that's a key part of our job day in day out with our students with our colleagues with our MDT with our even like negotiating and compromising our roster it's like we're coaching the nurse unit manager into right. an outcome and a result that we actually want for ourselves so yeah. I love that you made that connection there. And I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't have thought of that. Like they wouldn't think of themselves. I'm curious to hear from everybody listening. Do you think of yourself as a coach? Tell us on social media. Let us know. Um, yeah, I want to find out. Let yeah. me know. Because <laughs> yeah. I feel like um, that is where the future of healthcare is going. I feel like there's, yeah. there's literally no other way for us to get out of where we are currently. I don't think that okay. like, we can throw more money at people, but we're also seeing that more money doesn't equal more happiness, right? It just makes life a little easier. Um, we're also seeing that, you know, pizzas on, on International Nurses Day isn't cutting it anymore. And that we've got generations of nurses coming through that are starting to see that they can make six figures becoming a YouTube influencer, <laughs> like, or a right. TikTok influencer. So people are getting savvy. I feel like we have generations of nurses across the board starting to wake up and be like, hold on, this doesn't quite work. This isn't right. working for us. And mm -hmm. I think that whilst coaching is not the full solution, I think that it's a huge part of the solution. We are slightly biased and we should definitely acknowledge that. <laughs> we love coaching. Love but I think that what you touched on, which not a lot of people in this podcast touch on, is the differentiation between, and I'm curious to explore this with you, you mentioned mm -hmm. at the start, mental health care practice versus a self-care mm -hmm. practice. Now, they could be interchangeable, but I'm yeah. curious to explore that with you because I preach this day in, day out until I'm blue in the face, which is 
you need to be able to manage your mind and feel the full spectrum of human emotion as a clinician and not make it mean anything about you and your capabilities and your worth and your value and your capacity to have. And yet this is where most of the challenges come up, right? Like the end of the first six months, we're frustrated, fed up, annoyed. We still feel like we don't belong. And we're having all these 60,000 stories a day about how terrible we are as clinicians, right? Or we're mm-hmm. 10 years in and we're, st- we're having lots of stories about who we are, what we're capable of, what's accessible to us. And then we're feeling like displaced or, you know, misaligned. And we make that mean that like the world's going to come falling down. That's what I did. And that's what I see so many people do. Where what I think you're talking about is like having that mental health care practice will allow us to manage our mind and feel our emotions and still go after what we want. Can you tell us more about Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for even asking me that question because it's extremely important to me. I think as nurses, we are so tied to the the role as being our identity. And that is a truth for some people, but the reality is like, you're a very multifaceted person, right? And so that is just an amazing layer of you, but at the core of you, I think it's really important and similar to you. I'm a huge advocate about like having a really good foundation of understanding, like you are exposing yourself to a lot of emotional trauma Mm. sometimes physical trauma that you see at work or like you might endure because you know sometimes our patients are delirious and they're agitated and they don't recognize what's going on and we take that in so much and we don't actually like unpack what we just did like let's be real like nursing like we see some crazy shit like it's not a normal job like Mm. we're not sitting at a computer and just putting in numbers like we're dealing with people's emotions and then we have our own at the end of the day right it makes me frustrated a lot with the nursing schools because they don't they don't teach you or they're not like encouraging you to like figure out how to balance yourself how to ground yourself especially when it's like a high emotional situation they're like oh you'll be fine you'll figure it out Mm -hmm. well who teaches you to figure it out you normally figure it out when it's too late you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I can speak from that because I had that. My burnout story was crazy. And I realized like, oh, like I haven't actually taken the time to figure myself out and like what works for me. What works for me is like going for walks, like talking to my therapist, like our hospitals for the most part will be like, oh, don't forget to like contact employee assistant program, mm-hmm. but they're not really like pushing it. And I know therapy is not for everybody, but like be open to different options, you know, Mm. because you never know what's going to work for you. And sometimes talking it out, right? Like I love my nursing community, but like sometimes when, if you and I were just talking about some crazy stuff we saw in the unit, it's not always therapeutic because we're trying to like one up each other. We're just talking (laughs) about another crazy stuff. We're not actually talking about like, this really made me feel like overwhelmed and I got anxious. Like that doesn't normally (laughs) happen. But if you have that with your nursing community, amazing. But Mm -hmm. I do encourage everybody who's listening to like, really take the time, like figure out like what are things that make you happy outside of nursing and tap into that because not only is nursing physical, it's a physical job, it is a mental and emotional job. Mm. And you posted mm. something amazing yesterday. And I'm like, yeah. yes, this was it. Like, what will take you out of nursing is not necessarily the physical labor, it's the emotional and mental toll that t- it takes over yeah. after a certain amount of time. Right. Totally. And that's why I'm encouraging everybody, like, a especially like as soon as you get out of school, you start your new job, your, your other role is also to figure out like how, Mm. what makes me mentally healthy. Yeah. Right. And as you were saying, like, that's in addition to self-care. So whether it's checking in with a therapist, like once a week or like taking an art class or doing fitness, like make sure that you are practicing mental health as much as you're practicing physical health. Yeah. Right. It will tie in together and it will make sure that you have a very successful career. Mm, 
Mm. It makes you a better practitioner. When you are mentally well, like, you know, like we have ups and downs here. Like it's not, it's not always a hundred percent, but like your end goal is to be like a well-rounded, like strong practitioner. Then I would advise you to also make sure that your mental health is also being a priority. I think that um, up until this point, we just really prioritized getting the degree right, which I, I understand. Like people want a career, they want to dive into all the things but I think that very quickly, I mean, I'm starting to get people now that have like just landed a grad job a couple of weeks ago and are already messaging me saying, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to navigate yeah. the ups and downs. And I talk about this all the time where it's like, hey, regardless of what level of career you're at, like it's in terms of your nursing career, your first day in any job is an emotional roller coaster. By the time that you've parked in the car park, before you even step into the hospital, you've probably felt 10 to 20, if not 30 different emotions, right? Like fear, yeah. overwhelm, joy, excitement, happiness, gratitude. Yeah. And it's like roller coaster ride before 6.59 and you're not <laughs> even started work yet, right? And sometimes yeah. that's what we go through before we even get to work. Now, I was, I've been learning a lot recently and, and the post that Vicky alluded to was about like, um, basically that, you know, nursing is a mental and emotional game and that the quicker that we learn how to manage our, our mental uh, well-being and our emotional wealth, uh, then we can actually enjoy our careers and we can remove yeah. ourselves from this roller coaster right and accept it as part of the journey. I think somewhere mm-hmm. at some point we were sold a narrative I don't know, I can't remember, it's like 10 plus years ago for me, but I'm like, what was the narrative like? Was the narrative that I was going to be, you know, saving the world and, you know, doing this great work? I don't know, but I feel like somewhere there was a missing piece where somebody said, every day you're going to be exposed to micro trauma and traumas, Mm -hmm. you know, depending on the areas that you you work in, you are going to feel the full spectrum of human emotion. You are going to have to be able to manage your mind in a way like no other, because sitting at a desk Monday to Friday, you have to manage your mind. But, you know, you're managing your mind around maybe the tone of an email <laughs> or a deadline yeah, or like a yeah. big budget spent. And that is pressure and that's stress. But I came across something recently and I'm curious about your experience with this. Um, and this this was in a totally different context, but I immediately always apply everything to healthcare. And they were talking about internal and external validation. And I was thinking to myself, oh, my goodness. From the minute that we start our nursing school journeys, our nursing university journeys, we are taught to outsource our validation immediately to the Mm -hmm. buddy, to the doctor, to the multidisciplinary team, to the relative that's screaming down your face, right? And like taking all your power away. So I think from the, the start of our careers, we are externally validating, like we're looking for external validation for everything that we do. And the longer that we do that, we seem to like lose like little doses of our own ability to internally validate our experiences. So I think where you talk about that one on that one upping, you know, it's that whole chat in the tea room, right? Like, well, this happened to me. Well, girl, yesterday this happened to me. Yes. And, and it just keeps going, right? And we like we go nowhere. I love that you use that as an example. But I think that comes from a place of like we're we're looking for external validation from each other. And I think we have a bit of a culture and I'm generalizing here for people listening because maybe you work in an amazing environment and I'd love to hear if you do, because it gives me hope. Um, But we we literally do just tell people to pull the socks up and get on with that. Like, well, I had to go through it. So you have to go through it. And I think we are a generation of people that are like, hold on no more, no more. We can't do this anymore because what's happening is we're hemorrhaging really awesome, beautiful, highly skilled, amazing people um, again, we're biased because <laughs> that is us. But the job no longer is, a, is an appealing job because of the current state of the global healthcare system. Mm-hmm. And without us sounding Debbie Downer and like very negative, it's important to acknowledge that and to loop it back to the mental health for us to really prioritize that mental health care. And it does look different for different people, right? You mentioned therapy, you know, I've done therapy, even just being in coaching, being in a community, being in a free Facebook group, you know, being in a space yeah. that's more maybe spiritually based or allows you to explore different parts of your personality, even doing personality tests, like little things like that, that just give you a little bit of insight into reclaiming your power. 
incredible for you realigning yourself. But you're right. Every person, almost every person that I've had on this podcast gets to a point and they just like crumble in a heap. And they just go, I can't do this anymore. And that whole idea of internal versus external validation, they use the analogy of a cup, like with a hole in the bottom. And it was like this idea of like, yeah, you you can go and do the bubble baths. You can go and do the, you know, like align your chakras and all of the things, whatever you want to do. (laughs) You can go and do the gym and all of that. But if you've got that hole in the bottom that we haven't healed and created a really solid, solid foundation and practice. And that really hit me because I feel like that is something I'm still working on. You know, I don't sit here claiming to have found the answer. I literally dated. Oh yeah, me either. Me either. (laughs) We have many meltdowns, right? It's like, holy shit, I thought I'd done so much work and and I'm still trying to work this out, but I think what's important- And the reality is that you have, you have yeah. done the work, right? Yeah. But like yeah. the listeners, it comes in waves. Yeah. It, you're, you're, you're never done. You, you, you literally have to surrender to the, to the idea that like things are going to come up and you're going to be like, I thought we worked on this already. Yeah, <laughs> you did. Yeah. But you need to go to another level, right? right? So like give yourself the permission to still be a student. Mm. in in your practice and like keep asking questions you're gonna ask questions to the doctor to the inter interdisciplinary team but also like be a student of life right mm. be curious that's what coaches, we encourage yeah. there's not only one way to do something there's multiple mm. different ways and whichever way you want to do it that's your way and claim that but be curious yeah. about it I love that. And I we normally sign off this podcast for stay curious because it's one thing that I strongly <laughs> value is like, just be so curious about everything. For anybody listening, if you're like me, <laughs> I have this thought, this creeper thought that always comes up, which is like, when I've done the work, when I get there, it's going to be great. I don't know if you have something similar, but it's like this idea that there's a day in the future where I'm free from all of the drama, I'm free from the emotional roller coaster, and that it's just like this idyllic, perfect world. Maybe that's just my brain, but that is something that art comes up for me time and time again that I have to reorientate around. And it's like, no, 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 like you just said here. Yeah, I mastered that level of anxiety control. Now I get to go to the next level. And now I get to enjoy being imperfect, right? Now I get to um, trip up and fail on the podcast every week when I release it and it's listened to by 5,000 people. And who cares? Like, And I've yeah. been able to rebuild my nervous system, right? And I think that's mm-hmm. through coaching. That is coaching and psychology and just getting yeah. myself support. I cannot yeah. imagine where I would be if I had not have done this work. And I think that's oh, often- same. We forget how far we've come because we're too focused on how far we've still got to go, right? Agreed. So Agreed. powerful. It, yeah. It's so powerful, especially like when I'm in the teaching space at bedside, I tell my novice nurses, my students, I'm like, listen, one, you're not supposed to know everything because I, I don't know everything. And I've done this for over 12 years. And I'm like, there is no shame in saying, I don't know. Let me look it up. Let me ask. That's when you create a learning experience between the two people, right? Mm. So please don't be ashamed to ask questions. When you ask questions, you're also, you are creating experiences, right? Which Mm. you get to pay that forward to the next person that you're teaching. Again, I love that you like end your sessions with being, stay curious because being curious is also being empathetic, right? Mm. There's a space of you opening up and trying to understand where this person's coming from, right? When somebody's being curious with you, they're trying to understand you more. They want to see you. Mm -hmm. They want to know you, right? And that can be applied to your nursing. Like when you see that your patients are showing signs and symptoms, you being curious means that you are showing care. Mm -hmm. You're trying to understand what's going on with them, right? As soon as you stop being curious and you just listen to everything the doctor's saying, and no offense to the doctors, but like nurses are at the bedside for 12 hours for a reason. Mm. We have that critical thinking. Don't be afraid to use that. Mm. And by doing that, by being curious, by asking questions, by seeing the person and trying to be empathetic, like not only are you growing as a practitioner, but like you are also showing your colleagues that like we have a lot more skill sets than people think that we do. Mm. And to step into that power, right? 
I love that. It's beautiful. And I was just thinking that as you talked about curiosity, it's like curiosity also ensures that we don't have confirmation bias, right? That we're not like mm-hmm. we just have our eyes on the prize, you know, when we go, oh, well, this is definitely a DBT or this is like, even though we don't diagnose, we still subconsciously do think about it. Yeah, you're, you're, you're trying to think about right? it. And we're yeah. like, what could this diagnosis be? Like when we approach everything curiously, it's, you're just so open to receive all of the ideas, which yeah. I love. And you mentioned it there about asking questions. And for those listening, I see this a lot online where people talk about safety and they talk about wanting the workplace to be safe. And like, we can keep advocating, keep fighting for that. But I think that the work lies for each and every one of us in creating safety internally for ourselves. Like I always Mm. have this belief and, you know, it's a bit polarizing, but I'm going to say like in order for us to have external safety, we have to create internal safety. We must deal with what we can control first before we start kind of like really focusing and over focusing and becoming hyper vigilant on the external world. We haven't done the internal work, right? Which I think is, you know, one of the, the many ways in which coaching could help the nursing industry mm-hmm. um, globally. But I would love to pivot and dive into your work as a coach and an executive coach and tell us a little bit more about that in your transition into nursepreneurship because we have lots of people on here that are you know they they love to hear about all the ways in which we can use our amazing skills and I always love hearing how it came to be so tell us about that being an executive coach the other terms can be leadership coach career coach life coach um I in particular use leadership coaching because I believe anybody and everybody, no matter what level you're at, is a leader within your own industry, right? Whether you're a leader working on the oncology unit or you're a leader in critical care, leader actually in senior leadership, whatever. And again, my biggest thing that I learned in coaching school was I wanted to give accessibility and options to anybody and everybody. What I was finding was coaching was only being offered to people in executive or C-suite mm. roles. And I thought, that's bullshit. <laughs> I'm like, yes. <laughs> there's, there's leaders everywhere and everybody needs help, right? Like there will come a time and a place where you might hit an obstacle and you're like, I don't know how to get here. And there's not one way just to get something done. Like there are multiple different ways. And what the term being your thinking partner came from was like, you might see something in front of you and you're like, okay, I want to get here. There's a block and I don't know how to get there. And me as your coach, I'm going to ask you questions that are going to push you a little bit to look around you and see like, is there another entrance for you Mm. to get to where you want to go? It might be longer. It might be shorter. Who knows? But you have to ask yourself like, Am I willing to try something different to get what I want? Mm. Like, how bad do you want it, right? And again, in nursing, we are huge advocates about reflecting on our own practice, right? Mm. And sometimes, just as flawed human beings, all of us, like, we're scared to ask ourselves the hard questions. Mm. Because if I answer it, I might not like the answer. (laughs) (laughs) Or I might not know what to do with that answer. Mm -hmm. And as coaches, our job is to ask you those hard questions, but also be the person to help support you to be like, I'm not going to leave you hanging out to dry. I'm going to ask more questions that I know that you deep down have the answer to. And I'm going to provide you a safe space to really get to be curious about like, where are your boundaries? What are your definitions? What are your values? What do you want? Yeah. Say it with pride and let's devise a plan to go get it. Mm, yeah, so, coaching has been great in that sense. The experience I had from my coach is what I want to give to other people. Mm, yeah. I love it. I think that people underestimate how much, especially as you build your career, how challenging it is actually to leave that comfort zone. Even if that comfort mm-hmm. zone is a hot mess express and it's a pile of shit, it's like, it's super hard to leave, right? Because what is familiar, whether it's good, bad, indifferent, ugly, it is comfortable. And our brain loves yeah. comfort, even if it's, yeah. you know, not actually that comfortable. So we mm-hmm. stay there and we put up with this crap for X amount of years or decades for some people. And it's kind of almost a little, you know, a lot of people come to me and they'll say, Liam, 
I want to change jobs. So I don't really want to invest in myself and I don't really want to, you know, do all the work and like, I just want a quick fix. I'm like, well, I'm not your person. <laughs> this is not yeah. a quick fix. We, you can't do this within a week. You have got, you know, some real deep self-exploration to go on, which in all ways, shape and forms is always an amazing return on investment for yourself. And then also you get to know yourself a little bit better. We get to clear up some of your mindset challenges and blocks and we get to create amazing options. And nine times out of 10, these people end up going on to having a better job that's more aligned to them. But the the matter of the fact is people don't know because they don't ask the questions like you mentioned. It's interesting. I put up a post recently on Facebook and I asked people, what would you change about the healthcare system in Australia? And there was like, you know, like hundreds of comments. And it's amazing to see that and see people engaging. But then I started doing coaching. You know, I was like in the comments, like, so what would that look like? And like, everybody's drawing a blank. I was like, well, there's some people answering, people are drawing a blank. And it's like, we have to be super clear about what we want in order to attract it into yeah. our lives. And we we can't ask for more money without being like, you know what? I want $60 an hour. You know what I want? I want $100,000 a year. We have to mm-hmm. at least speak it out into the universe. And I think that coaching is a great space where you can create that safety for you to go, hold on. Just you and I here, Vicky. <laughs> What is it that you actually yeah. truly want? This is a safe space. And I just want to let people know that are listening. You know, when you declare to the world that you want something, you want to work towards something, it doesn't mean you have to do it. <laughs> I yeah. think sometimes we stress that because we we suddenly go into, well, how will I make this happen? But I don't even I don't even focus a lot on the how, typically in coaching, because the how, there's 50 different hows. There's 50 different ways mm-hmm. to do it. It's just about us actually declaring it and then thinking about the 50 different ways in which we could do it. And then you letting your mind, your body, your energy, like decide which is the path to go. And that sounds spiritual and woo woo, but when you're in it, it's crystal clear. Yeah. It's, it becomes I think crystal clear. In the coaching school, like one of the, like, the common expressions was like, trust the process. And I was like, what the hell does that mean? Like, <laughs> like as nurses were like, a plus B is C. I like, what is this trust the process? <laughs> I hate to tell the listeners, it actually works. <laughs> it's a, trusting, trusting the process and understanding that like, again, within the coaching mindset, asking yourself, what are these different possibilities? What does it mean to me? What do I want? And also having the grace and the humility to be like, okay, I know what I want, but I don't actually have to do it if I don't want to. Whatever is meant for you will come for you. It yeah. will never meet you. And sometimes you can be like working towards a goal and you're almost there and you're like, you realize I don't actually want this. Mm. And there is no, no harm. There's no shame in saying this is not for me. I have coached and also taught students who are going through the critical care program to come into the ICU. And then they realize I don't like this. I like being a ward nurse. There's no shame in that, right? We need nurses in every component. That's why I'm saying like, you are a leader no matter where you're standing, Mm. right? And you should be proud of that and hold your head up high because the reality is such a Debbie Downer within nursing, but like in its current state, it's a dumpster fire everywhere, no matter where you're standing. Mm. Mm. (laughs) But can you pivot and say, I am bringing this percentage of myself into nursing and I want to show up as a leader here and I will be a positive light for the 12 hours that I'm working and I'm okay with that. That's also an amazing thing to also claim for yourself, right? Yeah, I think that's what I was talking about earlier, this idealistic view of what it would be and could be. I think we need Mm -hmm. to let that go a little bit because what I think happens, and this was me for 12 years, was I was arguing with reality. I was arguing Mm. it was right in front of me. And Mm. I was like, but when it's like this, or if only we had more staff or whatever. And look, we can do that. And this is, I coach a lot of people on this. We can go down that path. But the reality is you get to create your own experience within your role. And that is an internal process, right? Like Mm -hmm. the external things, my coaching is very focused on what's within control with within you so we don't really focus on the external because the external is out with our control it's it's yeah. external to you. you can't do it you can advocate you can um you know, ask for change you can do all of those things but what's within your immediate control on your 12-hour shift is how you think 
and how those thoughts create feelings within you and how you act and what results you create for yourself and for your patients that align with your whole kind of like working right as a human like your being as a human and I think that the byproduct like a strategic byproduct of coaching is that sometimes when people raise their self-awareness and they raise their ability to um or they see or they they introduce more of like emotional flexibility in their life they then can go back into these jobs and they actually start enjoying them like some people listen to like what (laughs) but they can actually start enjoying them because they start to see that these things that they were arguing with externally are 100% there. They're 100% real and true. But the more that you focus on them, the more your life is just a pile of shit. Like, it's just terrible. The more you (laughs) focus back on you and being like, you know what, I'm showing up seven till seven and I'm doing my work and I'm going to get my break regardless and I'm going to eat healthily and I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to do the things that light me up. And we clear that drama out from the external world that we can't change then we reclaim all of our power. It's like we put the plug in the bottom of the cup, right? Yep. Yes. All of it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> like there's that saying like, yes, like the world is happening on the outside, but you are also happening to the world. Yeah. So exactly what Liam is saying, like mm. take your power back. If there are things that you don't want to be a part of you have the control to say no it's not for me I'm going to show up the way I want to and be respectful and caring and what I need to do and again similar to you that's what I do with my clients what do you want to do the world will always have on you regardless but how do you want to show show up Yeah, yeah I love that one question I've been asking myself recently is on my own journey is like what does self love look like today And that I'm kind of like taking a little pivot, but like just finding a question that you can ask yourself, like what does self-compassion look like today? How, like what is showing up look like today? Maybe it's showing up and like going all in, or maybe it's showing up and doing what you need to do to get through the day. But giving yourself permission, listening to your body, your energy, I'm noticing that some days I'm like, what does self-love look like today? And it's like luxurious and it's amazing. And some days it's like, I cleaned my teeth. (laughs) and that's totally fine right like that's amazing so I think that having these self-awareness tools from coaching really allows us to trust the process and just to add one point to that is this idea that I think that what keeps so many of us stuck is that we think there's a right or a wrong and we think that there's a right path or there's a wrong path (laughs) <laughs> and I think that that kept me stuck for a long time. And what I've found mm-hmm. in trusting the process is, you know what? The universe, the results that I create from the actions that I take and the feelings that I practice feeling and the thoughts that I practice thinking will determine whether this is the right or the wrong thing for me. And it's okay, yeah. like you said, to go, you know what? I've done this for six months and this is just not for me and that's amazing what a beautiful gift of awareness and acknowledgement and we should be patting ourselves on the back instead of beating ourselves up we should be saying look at you you tried it didn't work out not for reasons because you're not capable because you did it for six months just because this isn't aligned and there's something better and bigger and amazing coming for you let's move on right can you imagine what kind of workforce we would have if we just let ourselves try and just go and know that if you go to ICU and you don't like it and you come back the the world's not going to end if you do ICU for 10 years and you want to step back and you want to go back to med surgery you want to go to outpatients or you want to do community you can do it there are no rules there are no rules rules. it's fascinating isn't it I want (laughs) to dive into like your coaching offering I know we've talked about coaching but I want you you to tell us a little bit more about the work that you specifically do and you're like what you found interesting about nursepreneurship. What I have found interesting is that the blessing of coaching has offered us to change our mindset and look more in a proactive mm-hmm. like uh, situation. But <laughs> when working with nurses, um, because we are we work in a system that is very retroactive. Mm-hmm. Nursing mindset is also in a very retroactive state. Yeah. So being, and I'm sure you have seen this as well, like there's a, it's a bit of a grind to find nurses who are, who are, have a, an, a conscious and open conscious mindset about wanting to be proactive. 
even though the, and I'll, I'll use medical jargon here, the signs and symptoms of being stuck are present, but you need to take another step to be like, Hey, I need to be proactive. I can't yeah. be retroactive to fix this. So that's what I've learned um, in the last two years of being a coach and having the nursing background. Um, so what I offer to my clients and I don't only work with people in healthcare, I work with everybody, but in particular women who want to really like find their voice and step into that leadership positions that they want. Um, we work on normally an eight week um, package and we meet once a week. I also like text just to do check-ins. I normally give some form of a, a homework assignment and mm -hmm. all of this is all made to find out like, who are you? What are the values? What defines you? What do you actually want without feeling any judgment from anybody mm -hmm. else? How do you step into that? Right. I think in general, from coming from, again, the healthcare perspective, no one asks us what we want. No, we're always saying like, if the doctor writes the order, we just do it. There's not that like collegial, like, Oh, so Vicky, what do you think is going on? You've been here for 12 hours. You know what I'm saying? My job working with women or working with people from healthcare is to ask you, like, what do you actually want? If there were no boundaries, say it, right? Mm -hmm. And toast down, tell me what you want. Okay, cool. So what does that mean to you? Mm -hmm. Why do you want it? What draws you to it, right? Like, we get so confined in being like okay well I've done nursing or I've done this so now I have to go get my master's and now I got no you don't necessarily have to do that mm -hmm. that might not be your way to feeling fulfillment right so let's yeah let's figure it out let's yeah. see how that goes so I work with people also experiencing burnout and like really dismantling that and really trying to figure out like okay how did it happen? When did it happen? And how do we try to reduce it or at least eliminate it? And things that I'm hoping to do in the future, I would love, love, love to do a retreat. Um, Ooh. A nursing retreat. Yeah. Would be really cool because, you know, we guys, we got that time off that we can, we can make things work. <laughs> we can switch this to make it work. Um, my goal is to do nursing retreats as well as just like women leadership retreats and build community with people, like-minded people who are thinking mm. for thinking, who want to be curious, who want to ask those questions and are willing to be silly and make mistakes, whatever yeah. that means, and just explore, right? So that's my hope and my intention. And I love that you said, I'm putting it out there and however it happens, it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And what's aligned is aligned and it will come and it'll, do you know what I mean? I think it's just Absolutely. such a beautiful way to think about things. And I think when I was stuck in the system, I couldn't see that. I was still caught up in the, in the drama at the time. Um, yeah. I couldn't see any other way. So I deeply resonate with people that are listening that feel that way. And I encourage you to reach out to Vicky or I and just have a chat, like just chat yeah. with us. Like, you know, have a chat and explore. Sometimes those calls are all that's required for some people. They just like, some people, you know, we just change a thought and they're like, boom, yeah. and they can see it and they move forward. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I love all of that. And I think where you were talking about the retroactive approach, it's fascinating, hey, because I often think about this, I'm putting this out into the universe. Wouldn't it be fascinating to have like an early warning scoring observation tool that I'm sure there is something that exists out there, but it's like we look at our patients and we prevent their deterioration, right? That's one of the things that we do usually do semi well. <laughs> I yeah. won't say 100% well because um, we don't count our rest breaks properly. But, no. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a global problem. How great would it be to see that, you know, at your professional development plan at the start of the year? Like, FYI, I know everybody's going to say, what professional development planning meaning, Liam? I know they don't happen, but we're going to make a change in the world and it's going to happen. Yeah. We're going to bring yes, it in. We will. Because imagine that every six months and you had a snapshot of your team and you could see who's on the cusp of burnout. 
these things are so important. Hey, so um, I love that. And if you guys want to get in touch with Vicky, um, how can they get in touch with you? You can find me on Instagram at VicBoat, so at V I C B O A T, um, or you can find me on LinkedIn under Vicky Boateng. Um, but yeah, slide into the DMs. Let me know how you're doing. I'm again, just tell me where you're from and say hey, what's up. Um, I'm always open to collaborating with people, so. I love being playful and doing like teamwork, AKA I'm a nurse, hello. I love collaborating and just finding out like what projects people are doing and seeing like how we can help each other. I'm all about paying it forward. So if there's a project that you wanna work on, let me know, um, I would be so happy. I'm. That's how I got to know Liam. I slid in Mine. his DM and been like, hey, I don't know what's going on. So don't be afraid. Like the worst that could happen is it doesn't happen. Who cares, right? Yeah. And I made a new friend. So Liam, you're always welcome to yeah. come to Toronto. I'll Thank show you, you. Around. next time I'm in Australia. I'll hit you up and we'll Let's hang out. Let's do it. I love it. No, I think the world is incredible. And we we met on the back end of a business program that we both went through. And the world is just so small nowadays. And it's great. It's so good to connect with people globally. And I love getting perspectives from different countries across the world that serve our Australian nurses that are listening and nurses elsewhere, because we've got nurses everywhere, India, Taiwan, Africa, we've got them everywhere. It's incredible. So thank you all for listening. Um, but yeah, it's so good to see that or indulge um, and you, you validate the fact that it is globally a problem and it is the same globally, but collectively we can start to come together, even though it seems like an insurmountable task, uh, to make real positive change in the system and to change it for future generations. So love your work. Um, one last thing I wanted to ask you was, what advice would you give to your new graduate self if you were gonna meet her today? Ooh, give yourself the grace and the time. Um you again are not supposed to know everything you're not going to know everything you're probably going to have gi issues for the first eight months of working um because you're scared <laughs> shitless to go to work and that's okay that is completely normal um and ask questions that's the only way you're going to learn ask questions okay. amazing yeah. so good all of the links to vicky's instagram will be in the show notes and thank you once again, Vicky. And thank you to everybody listening. We'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, you can tag us on Instagram at High Performance Nursing. Um, and we've got Vicky's Instagram there as well. And slide into our D DMs, have a little chat. Let us know what you loved about this episode. And uh, until next time, stay safe and stay forever curious. We'll see you soon.